In this video, we're going to attempt to find the inverse of a function. And as we try to find the inverse of a function, we need to think about what's happening with inverse functions. We've got this f of x function machine, and this other thing that's the inverse function. Remember that negative 1 is not an exponent. And remember, if a 3 goes in, maybe a 2 will come out. If you put that 2 into the inverse function, though, it's going to take you back to where you started. It undoes the original function, so it takes you back to 3. And we can do this generally, is if we put x into the function, it'll come out as a y, is usually what we think of. With the inverse, though, now we've got y going in, taking you back to where you started at x. Notice now the y's going in, the x is coming out, backwards from the first function, which had x going in and y coming out. It's backwards in the inverse function. In other words, to find an inverse function, we have to switch the x and y, so they're backwards, and solve for the y. Now, in function notation, we need to remember that the f of x is really representing the y, that whole piece f of x, or g of x, or h of x, whatever the problem has. So, if we want to find the inverse of h of x equals negative 3 over x minus 1 minus 2, we'll start by remembering that the h of x is really the y. So, it's really saying y equals negative 3 over x minus 1 minus 2. And then we're going to make a switch. Switch the x and y. So it's x equals negative 3 over y minus 1 minus 2. Switch the x and y. Technically, this is the inverse, but to make it in function notation, we want to have the y alone. So we got to solve for y. So let's first work to isolate the part with y by adding 2 to both sides. This gives me x plus 2 equals negative 3 over y minus 1. Boy, let's see if we can clear out that fraction. Let's multiply by the denominator y minus 1 on both sides. That'll divide out the denominator on the right, and we have y minus 1 times x plus 2 equals negative 3. Trying to get the part with y alone, so let's take the factor that doesn't have y and divide it out. That x plus 2 is multiplied, so we'll divide both sides by x plus 2, giving us y minus 1 equals 3 over x plus 2. Finally, to get the y alone, we'll add 1 to both sides, and y is equal to 3 over x plus 2, plus 1. Now, since this is technically the inverse, instead of saying y equals, we're going to s use the notation f inverse of x equals, because this is the inverse, oops, not f inverse, this is h inverse, it's the inverse of h. And so by using this notation, we've declared that we have found the inverse of h, 3 over x plus 2, plus 1. Let's find another inverse. Let's find the inverse of g of x, when g of x is equal to 5 times the cube root of x minus 6 plus 4. Again, remember the g of x part, that's the y, equals 5 cube root of x minus 6 plus 4. And again, in order to find the inverse, we're going to switch the x and y. So now it's going to be x equals 5, times the cube root of y minus 6, plus 4. Now, we just have to solve for y. Subtract 4 from both sides. x minus 4 equals 5 times the cube root of y minus 6, getting that radical alone. Remember that from solving radical equations. Dividing both sides by 5. We have x minus 4 over 5 is equal to the cube root of y minus 6. Now that the radical's alone, we can get rid of a third root with its inverse, a third power. 
on both sides. Third power and third roots are opposites. On the right, all we have is y minus 6. On the left, x minus 4 over 5 cubed. It can start to get ugly, that's okay. Our goal, we're trying to get y alone, which we're done with when we add 6 to both sides, where we have y is equal to x minus 4 over 5 cubed plus 6. And because this is in the, the inverse, instead of saying y equals, we're going to say, we're going to write f inverse, or in this case, g, because we're talking about g, g inverse of x. The inverse function is x minus 4 over 5 cubed plus 6. The way we find an inverse is we switch the x and y and solve for the y.